Hey guys, Randy here from Dino Cams. Uh, we have another installment of one of our tech videos. Uh, today we're going to be going over how to remove the stock gas tank and install a top plate or a fuel mounting uh, fuel pump mounting plate. And um, I'll go over what tools are necessary and some different options that we have as to how to do it. Uh, we get calls all the time on how to do this, and it is quite simple. So we want to go over that today and show you how to do it. Okay, so we have our new car 212 engine here and I'm gonna go over a few of the materials or parts that we're gonna need to do the job and I'm also gonna go over a tool list with you. Um, for as far as tools, I've got a quarter inch drive ratchet, a quarter inch drive extension. Now I'm using the little weeble wobble extension just because if I use this, I don't have to remove the muffler, but if you don't have this type of extension, you will need a 13 millimeter wrench to remove your muffler. I got a 10 millimeter wrench. 7 16 wrench. I got a 5 30 second Allen wrench. We have a 7 16 socket, 10 millimeter socket, 8 millimeter socket. I also have a pair of dikes or cutters and a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, and my impact wrench. I don't do any job without an impact wrench. I'm just that lazy. Next, our material list. As I've said, we've got our engine. We've got our fuel pump mounting bracket. We do have a couple of options on the fuel pump, which I'll go over later. I've got me some uh, premium fuel line so that it doesn't harden by using gas. I've also got some clear fuel line for my pulse line. And also I've got three different options of pulse valve covers. Um, I'll go over these. This is the type that I tend to use, uh, which is just a straight eighth inch pipe tap. Uh, but I know that a lot of people might not have access to a pipe tap. So we also sell this press in pulse fitting where you just simply drill a half inch hole, press in the rubber grommet, and uh, you don't need any eighth inch pipe tap. And then also I've seen several at the track uh, where people are pulsing off the top of the valve cover, which is a lot simpler. Um, I don't choose to do it this way for, for number one. I don't like pulsing off the top of the baffle. I like pulsing on the bottom of the baffle. Uh, and also, I don't feel like there's any way for me to get all the metal shavings out of here uh, when I drill and tap this hole. So this is not my choice, although it does work. I've seen a lot of them in the field. So now we're going to get right into it. All right, so we're ready to get started. So first of all, let me explain. You're probably thinking, why do I need to remove my gas tank? Well, a lot of rule packages in the southeast, uh, and it's also spreading you know, across the country, a lot of rule packages now are requiring that you move the factory gas tank and run an auxiliary tank in the floor pan of the cart, which would require a fuel pump, of course, to pump fuel from the auxiliary tank to the carburetor. Uh, the reason being why we want to take this tank off, as you might imagine, to get an engine to run with a stock tank, you have to vent the cap. So that means we're drilling holes straight through this fuel cap, which deems it uh, you know, useless uh, as far as keeping fuel from splashing. So now let's say you get an accident, you turn the cart over, you've got raw gas pouring right out of this tank right next to a muffler that gets an excess of 1250 degrees. Uh, not to mention it's right beside your head. So it's super dangerous. Uh, we encourage anyone who runs this Ducar or Predator classes, get rid of this gas tank. Not because we're trying to sell more parts, it's just a safety issue. So we really want to get rid of the tank. All right, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is remove this stock tank. And to do that, we'll need a 10 millimeter socket. We got two nuts here under the bottom on the engine post, and we're going to remove those. Next, we're going to go around here to the rear of the engine, remove the spark plug boot. We're going to get our extension and our 8 millimeter socket. And I don't know if you can see, but there is an 8 millimeter bolt right here. We're going to remove that bolt. Now we have the tank where it will move, it's loose. So we're gonna unhook this vent tube right here from the top of the air box. 
pick up on the back of the tank and then pull the front of the tank out. Now we have the tank loose. The only thing holding us now is the fuel line. Uh, in order to get a better view of the fuel line, I'm going to take this air box off so you can see it. That's also going to be a 10 millimeter socket. It's only two nuts. Make sure your choke is on and your fuel is off so that this air box will slide by. You will have to unhook the hose right here from the back of the valve cover. Real easy. Just slides right out. Now we're going to remove that box so you can see what I'm doing here. Now my tank is completely loose with the exception of the fuel line holding it on. So I'm going to take a pair of needle nose or a pair of standard pliers would work. Grab this clamp and you need to slide it down rather than up. Slide the clamp down, start to pick up on the fuel line. Then you'll have to go back and slide the clamp some more. The reason we're sliding the clamp down instead of sliding it up is because there's a large barb on this fuel inlet, which keeps that clamp from sliding over the barb. So now we've got that unhooked. We can take the clamp off. Now we can remove our tank, fuel line and all. You won't need this anymore, so we'll just disregard the tank. All right, so we got our stock tank out of the way. Uh, next thing we're going to do is move to our fuel pump bracket. Uh, a lot of people use a full top plate like you'd see on the, the clone engines, but we choose to use just the bracket because number one, it's a good bit cheaper. Number two, we don't have a wasted throttle assembly uh, that can't be used. So next we're going to take our fuel pump and bolt our pump to the top of the plate because it's a lot easier to bolt before we bolt it on the engine. We do have two different options of fuel pumps. You have your adjustable pump that has the screws so that you can reroute where the lines go. And we have the non-adjustable. Now in the future, the non-adjustable is all that will be available. So that's what we're going to work with today because that's what we will be using in the future. So this top plate, this uh, fuel pump mounting bracket does come with hardware. Uh, so the only thing we need to do is locate the in and the out on our fuel pump. We want our in going forward. We want our out towards the carburetor. So we're going to put these Allen head bolts in from the top. Got a 7 16 lock nut or a quarter 20 lock nut on the bottom. I'm going to start both of them. Then I'm going to get this 5 30 second Allen wrench and the 7 16 wrench. Snug these up. Now my fuel pump secured to my top plate. Next thing I'm going to do is also supplied hardware. I've got two uh, quarter inch bolts with the nuts and washers necessary. I'm going to bolt this to the top post on the engine. So we're going to put a bolt through the top with a washer. Washer and a nut on the bottom. Repeat the same thing on the second one. I'm going to go to a 7 16 socket. 7 16 wrench on the bottom. Now this thing is adjustable. It will slide up and down. I like to put it lower just because I like keeping it kind of low profile. Like I like to line it up with the post just because I'm kind of OCD and I like the way it looks. apologize for all the noise. Now you do want to make sure that you don't drop it so low that your nut makes contact with your governor arm. So check that. Make sure everything's clearing. We're good on this one. So the next thing we'll move to is routing fuel lines. Now this can be a bit tricky. So I'm going to attempt to route this fuel line with the blower housing on just because it's less work for you. Uh, but if that uh, deems to be too aggravating or too much trouble, you can remove the four bolts from the blower housing and take it out. So you got a hole right here in the top of the engine and you got a hole in the back of your blower housing, which is where the stock fuel line would be routed. So we're going to attempt to run through that stock hole. 
As you can see, that wasn't very difficult. I ran it right through the hole in the block, came out the back of the blower housing, and I'm going to pull myself some excess line. So now you can see I've got a line coming out of the back, a line coming out of the front. We're going to go ahead and hook this to the carburetor first because it's most difficult to deal with. You just slide it on, and then I'm going to use a zip tie to secure it. Now just a little trick I've learned, a lot of people put a sleeve over this uh, inlet, but with the new larger barbs like we spoke about earlier, it's really hard to get that sleeve over it. So what I do is just use a quarter inch fuel line and then I'll use two zip ties. And so far we've had no issues with that. So that would be my recommendation. Use two zip ties here because the last thing we want is a fuel leak. Pull them tight and secure, snip them off, now our fuel line is done on the carburetor. So I'm gonna pull my carburetor up snug where it belongs and I'm gonna pull my fuel line through. You could route the fuel line right through the same channel in the top of your insulator, just like your stock fuel line was. Uh, that works very well. That's also why we like to use this premium line because number one, it doesn't harden, but number two, it's a little smaller in diameter and it fits right through that channel in the insulator perfectly. So now that I've got that done, I'm gonna pull my fuel line up to my fuel pump, get an approximate length, snip the line. Always leave it just a little longer than you want. You don't wanna pull the fuel line extremely tight because over time it will draw and get a little shorter. So we're gonna put another zip tie here. You want a zip tie or safety wire or put clamps of some sort on every fuel line connection because the last thing we want is one of those to come off uh, and combat the safety that we're trying to instill in the first place. So now um, I'm going to move around to putting my valve cover on. Uh, I took the liberty to go ahead and prepare some valve covers so you didn't have to wait on me to do that. So before I get my air box back on where we can see well, we're going to change out our valve cover. This is where that weeble wobble extension we spoke of comes in handy because now when I put my socket on, it will move and I won't have to remove this muffler to take this valve cover off. So we take off our stock valve cover, we pull out our uh, stock gasket because you're going to need that. Now, like I said, if you've got access to an eighth inch pipe tap, now you would want to go ahead and drill and tap this valve cover. But let me give you a few words of caution, some things that we've learned the hard way. Uh, if you decide to drill and tap your own pulse fitting, um, or if you use the press in type and you put it in the location I like, you're going to be right next to the bolt. This bolt that would go right on top. You're going to want to be right here because if you move too far over, of course you get in the way of the bolt and you can't get the bolt in. If you move too far towards the exhaust, the exhaust will literally melt the pulse line. So you've got to be right between the spark plug and the bolt hole, right dead center in the two is where it works best for me. I think that's why we're seeing a lot of people at the track go with this method uh, because it's easier to get down here and get away from that bolt. Uh, again, either way, whatever works for you, or if you don't have access to an eighth inch pipe tap, you can always buy the one that we have with the rubber push-in fitting, uh, and all you need then is a half inch drill bit. Nevertheless, we're gonna go with this one today. We're gonna reinstall our valve cover gasket. Uh, it will only fit one way, so we can't make a mistake on that. Put it back in. Just a little extra added bonus, while you've got that valve cover off, especially of a new engine, it's always a good idea to check your valve lash uh, on these new or used engines. So while you're already in the engine, I would always check it. We recommend four thousandths on both sides, intake and exhaust. We're gonna start all four bolts back, being careful not to cross thread them. Now again, like I said, this one can be a booger, 
Uh, it is a lot simpler if you just remove the muffler. Uh, I'm not going to have to do that because I've got the right equipment, but normally it would be easy. So now we've got our pulsed valve cover installed. So the next thing we're going to do is use a piece of this big, nice, clear fuel line that's common in the carding industry today. And we're going to plug it right onto that pulse line. I like to run it right under this stock bracket that comes on the engine. Notice I didn't remove that when we took the tank off. I used that to keep the fuel line away from the muffler. And then we're going to run it around front and you just make a loop and hook it right into your pulse line, which is the, the pulse line is the fitting on top. That's all there is to it. You don't want to pull it too tight because you don't want to kink the line. Okay, so leave yourself plenty of room. Now, we've got our valve cover installed. We've got our fuel line installed. We've got our pulse line installed. Next thing we can do is put the uh, air box back on this thing. So we'll put our gasket back on. As we can see, the gasket has got to fit the back of the carburetor. Uh, it will go on both ways, but only one way is correct. So make sure this large hole in the carburetor lines up with this hole. Now, one important step. I've seen this at the track already this year. Uh, I'm sure you've probably seen it before. Air can only enter the carburetor through the air filter. As you can see, if I pulled this line, which goes to the valve cover, or when we removed the vent line, both of those are exposed and air can be pulled through these holes. That's a no-no. They're going to throw you out in tech if you have either one of these exposed. There's several ways that you could do it. This one, the line has to stay on. So make sure you got the stock line to your valve cover because that has to be there. But this is the little booger that'll get you. You got to make sure to plug this hole, whether it be with RTV silicone. I see a lot of people take a piece of fuel line and slide over it and put a bolt in it. If you do that, make sure you zip tie it really well because it will slide off really easy because that's a 3 16th tube, not a quarter inch tube. So if I'm going to go with the fuel line method, which is easy because I've got a leftover bolt out of the back of my tank and I've also got some excess fuel line, we're going to make sure that we zip tie this well because otherwise it could fall off. You want to zip tie the screw and the fitting. Pull them really nice and tight. Snip those off. Now that's on there good. So now we want to install our air box. Again, make sure our fuel is turned off and our choke is on. And we're going to stick this in here and you got to get the choke and the fuel line or the fuel shut off to go through this box. It takes just a little wiggling and it'll go on. Slide it up until it bottoms out. Put these two nuts back on. We're going to go back to our 10 millimeter socket. Always pick up on your air box when you go to snug them up. This doesn't need to be locked down tight. Uh, you're, you're tightening up plastic against plastic, so you just want to snug these two nuts. You don't want to really crank them down because you could break the intake, make it suck air, then the engine won't run reason we pick up on the box is because you've got your throttle up under the box on this side. I don't know that you can see it, but you want to pick up enough to where all that is clear. Now, lastly, we need to hook this hose back into the valve cover just like it came out. It slides in really nice. You want to make sure you get it straight so it's not kinked. Reinstall our plug wire. That's it. We've got our fuel pump mounting bracket, we've got our pump, we have our pulse line, fuel line, everything is complete here. Uh, again, make sure that all of your connections have a zip tie or some sort of safety wire to hold them. Then you would hook your fuel line right into the inlet and turn the fuel on and this thing's ready to start.